atmospheric dust comes from large deserts all around the world. These deserts are usually located in hot and subtropical areas, but there are also deserts located in high latitudes, so-called high latitudes deserts, as you can see here behind me, such as in Iceland. These deserts are located both in the Arctic and Antarctic, for the Northern Hemisphere in Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Iceland or Svalbard, but for the Southern Hemisphere in Antarctica, Patagonia or New Zealand. There is a big difference between high latitude dust, such as here in Iceland, uh, compared to the Saharan or subtropical desert dust. And in hot deserts you don't have glaciers. Uh, which you have here, which produce other types of sediment. And the particles we emit here are basically very small rocks. Um, you see that they are all different. They have different shapes, they have different colors. About 5% of the global dust budget in atmosphere actually comes from the high latitude deserts. In fact, Iceland is the largest desert in Europe with area over 40,000 square kilometers of desert and eroded areas of volcanic origin. For a long time, Iceland was not considered as an important dust source. Uh, now it retrieves much and much more and more um, attention. And as we can see, a lot of dust is emitted. So we need strong winds to pick up the dust and also we need a dry and uh, uncovered soil for the dust to be available to be picked up. The high latitudes are quite a sensitive environment, so we assume that a change in dust concentration um, have a strong impact on the future of this climate and ecosystem we do have here. There's some evidence that uh, high latitude dust can, can go uh, up to the Arctic and even, you know, there's some so there could be some hemispheric transport impact. There are a lot of questions of how this dust may affect different components of the landscape in these high latitude areas. You know, ocean productivity in the north, uh, you know, how they affect like, glacier albedo, etc., etc. We still really don't know like, if dust uh, cools or warms the planet, for example. They may also indirectly affect then um, the radiative, radiative balance of the Earth or the, the energy balance and so may affect in the end our weather and our climate. We know that if dust is deposited on, on ice or snow, then the ice or snow melts faster. So here that has a much stronger impact than elsewhere. We need to understand, you know, how the glacier and the melted water, you know, affects dust emission, how dust is affecting the glacier as well. So and most importantly, uh, the key question that you know, underpins our research is uh, we need to constrain the effect of dust on climate. You know, for me, it's, uh, it's very special that, that this is working now, we just need a little bit more dust. Mm -hmm.